So on Tuesday of this wonderful week, we released a film on the channel, which we will link down below, which ended up being probably our most popular uh, film of the off season thus far. And it was titled Five Players You Should Never Trade Off Your Dynasty Roster. Okay. If someone comes to the trade offer, you hit them with the fucking nope. That's what we're doing. Okay. And basically I talked about how, you know, everyone talks about, oh, everyone has a price, et cetera, et cetera. And we popped off a little bit and maybe I was angry because like fucking I'm trying to figure out where I need to live by the end of this. You know, there were some personal uh, outside factors that got me riled up for the video, but it made for good content apparently. And I gave an example of a team that I drafted last summer. It was a brand new startup draft dynasty team. And we went through my roster and I talked about some of the young players with a lot of upside that I will not be trading for anything near market value. You would have to, you'd have to double market this shit up. All right. Double, triple, quadruple AMC stock type shit in order to have me flip these guys. And I labeled them kind of like my gold star players. Right. And we talked about this team. It was young. It was upside. It wasn't competing last year when I drafted the team originally shout out to the fade, the fetal league and everybody in there, except for Tony. And, uh, we went through my roster, we looked at it, we talked about the young players, and we looked at the picks because it was a team that I drafted very, very young, didn't expect to compete immediately, wanted to offload some of the stuff I have now for future picks. And the future came, future done come, pause. And the future is now because we have a lot of first round picks in the 2022 mock draft. So this is a continuation, as promised, of Tuesday's video where we're going to do a mock draft based on my actual team and the actual picks I have going through my roster, going through the league settings, going through my mindset of how I will attack this rookie draft. It's going to be unfortunate because fucking everyone in the league is going to probably watch this video and then like any player that I want, I'm not going to end up getting because they're all pieces of shit and we'll just do it to get me riled up. As you can see, it's not hard to get me riled up. So that's what this video is today. A super flex rookie mock draft with real implications, right? We could do it on sleeper app. They allow you to mock draft based on your league settings and the picks that you actually have, which is a super, super cool feature for us as Cleatos. Okay. So after the intro, we are going to look at the team. I'll explain the settings. I'll explain my mindset going into the rookie draft, et cetera, et cetera. If you enjoy the video, if you've got a rookie draft coming up after the NFL draft, make sure you hit the button that says subscribe, put the D in it. I know y'all are good at that. Don't know why I said that. You know what we got to do before the theme music plays. I had to untuck because I've already I've already tucked it in because I was ready, but y'all not ready. Let's get ready. Tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Let's see. What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Make sure you're subscribed if you want everything fantasy football up until literally December, January, or whatever. We're putting in the work here in the early months. You already know what today's video is about. So let's jump into the sleeper platform. Let's hope this works. So this is the squad in Fade the Fetal. And you guys will be able to see it. Tony will put the team up on the screen or whatever. And again, in Tuesday's video, we went more in-depth on this team. And some of the guys that I, for no reason whatsoever, will not be trading. That is Travis Etienne, Kadarius Tony, and Kyle Pitts. I want to build this team around those three guys. Now, to give you a little bit more context for the scoring settings, this is the 12-team league. This is a super flex, and it's a tight end premium. So quarterbacks, I think it's four point per passing touchdown. T typical quarterback fantasy stats and numbers, whatever. Running backs get half PPR. I want to. Is there point per carry in this league? Actually, let me check that out. I might just fuck around and and uh, have not even known the scoring settings. Let's see. Oh, six point per passing touchdown, minus three point per interception, point two per rush attempt. I forgot all about that. Receiving first down. Fuck no. What is that? That's not correct. Everybody go check your sleeper numbers. Make sure that, that they ain't fucking around with, with your settings right now. Half point per reception for running backs, 0.2 per carry. Okay, so that gives a little bit of a boost to the pure runners, a little bit of a less boost to the pass catchers because wide receivers get a full point per PPR, tight ends get 1.5. So it's a tiered setting of PPR. And it's actually a really, really fun setting because it starts to even out the positions. We also have two running backs starting, three wide receivers starting, which again, gives a little bit more of an edge to the wide receiver position in terms of like draft importance because you need more depth at the position, right? And the reason that running backs are so much more valuable than wide receivers is because there's so few of them that are actually fantasy viable. Whereas wide receivers are so many of them, but you add in an extra starting spot in the lineup. And then guess what? You don't have as many options available on the waiver wire. You don't have as many options available that will produce at a, at a level relative to another wide receiver too. 
So we've got three wide receivers. We got the tight end, which again gets 1.5 point per PPR. So Kyle Pitts, I got him into 3 1 in the startup last year. And obviously, I'm fucking ecstatic about that. And then we have two regular flexes, which again, you know, the point PR, uh, the PPR tiering is helpful here for any non type of running back. But Damian Harris also, you know, he's uh, decent in this, in this type of format because it's 0. 0.2 per carry as well. So if you have 10 carries in a game, that's going to end up being an extra two points on thy stat sheet. So everyone on this team is is relatively young. So when I made the video Tuesday, you know, we went through my picks and I had the 103, the 104 and the 111 in the first round. I since have made a uh, a little swappy swap, right? And, you know, unfortunately for Jordan Hoffman, the little cunt, Davis Mills should have been on his no trade list. Should have had a no trade clause, but he gave him up to me like a fool. Okay. And basically what I did was I took the 104 that I had in the first round. So I had the 103 and the 104 because I made future moves to, to move back and get a bunch of first and shit. I took the 104 and I swapped it for the 111, the 312 and Davis Mills. For me, um, it, it was kind of a no brainer because the way I'm looking at this year's rookie class is the tier, you know, depending on where Malik Willis goes, you'll have Brees Hall, likely the one-on-one in most leagues. Uh, Malik Willis, if he goes top five, as almost projected at this point, he will be the clear 102. If not, you know, I, I think some people with quarterback needy teams might flip those. But regardless, those two will be the top two picks consensus in rookie drafts. After that, man, it's all up for grabs. Like some people might just want to play it safe and take a quarterback and take Kenny Pickett or Matt Corral, depending on what their draft capital is. Some people might love Kenneth Walker, take him at the 103. Some people might like Traylon Burks as their wide receiver one or Garrett Wilson or Drake London. And then all of those guys could also fall anywhere from the 103 back to like the 109, 110, 111. So the tier after those top two guys is so large that for me, the value moving back to 104 to 111 plus picking up a third round and Davis Mills, a starting quarterback right now, was perfect. So I smashed that and now I have the 103, the 111 and the 112. And I might even try to move that 103 before the rookie draft kicks off or during the rookie draft for either a later first round pick or a 2023 first rounder because again, the tier is so big. Now, Davis Davis Mills, y'all might be like, why the fuck would you trade for Davis Mills? Listen, Davis Mills is a starting quarterback and doesn't get much more valuable than a starting quarterback in a super flex dynasty league. He is young. He is a starter. He showed promise in his first year. He showed weekly upside where he had really, really big games. That's despite being on an absolute fucking train wreck of an offense. That is despite having zero weapons to throw to the shit offensive line. Like, listen, Davis Mills showed more than enough for me to at least entertain the idea that he could be a starting quarterback in the future. The Texans are going all in on him this year. They're not drafting a quarterback in the NFL draft, at least not in the first round where they would expect to draft, you know, the starter of their future. They're going to give him another shot. And for me, that's enough. Like he averaged more passing yards per game than guys like a lot of the the rookie class last year. Not Mac Jones, not Trevor Lawrence, but the other guys, he averaged more yards per game as well as other like certified starting quarterbacks in the NFL. So he showed enough promise that like, I don't know what Davis Mills is, but there's a chance that he is actually a good starter at the NFL level. And for me, that was a no brainer uh, to move back because now you're picking up almost two starting quarterbacks for the price of the 103 because I can go Davis Mills as well as whoever's at the 111. I'll be able to grab a Sam Howell or Matt Corral or someone like that. And you basically just got two for the price of you know that plus some other picks and assets and shit so happy with that move happy to move back in the first and i think if you have those mid first round picks i would be looking to move back this year but this is the squad i would say you know my quarterbacks are young some with upside but definitely not like strong enough to compete for a championship right now we have fields we have mayfield we have winston we have mills so you know we probably are looking at drafting you can never have enough starting quarterbacks in a super flex dynasty league so we might be looking to use one of those 111 112 204 if someone drops there on a starting quarterback uh running backs are not necessarily strong barkley travis Etienne, damian harris and we've got guys on the bench that i think have a little more, more upside like chase edmonds Khalil herbert Ramondre Stevenson, et cetera. So we probably need some help at the running back position. This is not a great running back class, but I'm glad that we have some mid second round and, and, and some third round picks, which is where we'll probably stockpile those running backs, rookies, and all the value this year in rookie drafts at the wide receiver position. We're pretty stacked up there, right? We have a lot of young talent with a lot of upside and Bateman, Debo Samuel, Kadarius Tony, but we're definitely looking for some more depth there because we only have like Curtis Samuel and some other shit guys behind him at the wide receiver position. Plus we start three wide receivers and two flexes and it's full point PPR for wide receivers. So this is a place where I can grab guys that are in that second tier wide receiver and have them play my flex spot if I need them to. So let's fucking jump into this mock draft, mock drafts. If you go to your league and then you click mock draft and you do new mock draft, it should automatically rip you right into your league settings as well as the picks, as long as your commissioner has started the new league year. And this is just such a bad like UX UI sleeper draft. Like there's no reason to have this fucking bar right here. And you should extend these and make the picks bigger, not dynamic. It looks a lot better on the cell phone, but this is what we have to work 
with, unfortunately. So um, we're just going to start the draft, and you guys know the settings again. So as predicted, again, Sleeper's ADP is pretty fucking rock solid with these rookies right now. So you have Brees Hall, one, Malik Willis, two. Now I'm sitting here at the 103, and I have Traylon Burks as my wide receiver one. I have him at the 103, but again, he's not in a tier above Wilson, London, Kenneth Walker, Kenny Pickett for me personally. So there's not a lot of value at being and drafting at the top of a tier. So what I'm likely going to do at the 103 is try to move this pick. There's going to be someone in the first round or someone in this draft overall that uh, that loves Garrett Wilson or loves Burks or London or Kenneth Walker or whatever that wants to trade up. And that, I mean, listen, like I'm going to be wrong on some player evaluations and everyone's going to be wrong and right on some players. So like more power to them if they have a very strong take on one of these players, they want to move up. I'd be happy. Like T-Rock's got seven, the eight, the nine. He's got plenty of ammo. If he wanted to send me like the 108 plus the 207 for this 103, I'd probably give that up to him. And that's what I'm going to be looking to do. If not swap this for a future pick. Um, if not, I would take, you know, whoever after the, you know, after the NFL draft will have a lot better idea of the tiers and where I'm going to be ranking these rookies, but we can go Kenneth Walker here. I still have a few doubts about like his upside at the next level, just because he's kind of a smaller back that doesn't have pass catching acumen on his resume. And, you know, that's a weird combination to have a lot of confidence. That's, that's the way I would put it really strong runner, but it's a weird combination of red flags to have a lot of confidence in. That's, that's the best thing I could say about Kenneth Walker in terms of like accurate opinions that I could have on the dude. So I'm not going to think too hard about this one. I think it's going to be one of these wide receivers. Again, don't worry about like the names too much as per se, just like the strategy here. So we'll take, you know, Traylon Burks. He's my wide receiver one in this class. So we have Burks, we have Wilson, Walker, London, Pickett, Isaiah Spiller, Jameson Williams, Matt Corral. So, you know, this is a pretty fucking accurate way the first round might drop off. Now I have the next two picks and then I have another pick in five spots at the 204. So we have the 111, 112, 204. And again, the running back class is just not strong at the top outside of the first two guys. Rashad White is my RB4. He's been my RB4 for a long time, but there's no shot in hell I'm putting him above starting quarterbacks or this wide receiver tier grouping. I already started these guys off because this is kind of a tier for me, right? Where it's Alave, Pickens, Watson, Jahan Dotson, Sky Moore, Jalen Tolbert, all, you know, Tolbert, I know is all the way down the list and he might not get drafted until day three, but I'm just saying. Again, we'll have a much clearer picture after the NFL draft happens. I would be happy with any of these two guys of these next three picks. And because the tier is large, we're almost guaranteed. We are guaranteed because there's six picks and there's six guys in this tier. We're guaranteed two of them. So again, NFL draft capital will fucking skew things up a little bit. But what I'm looking at, at right here is a quarterback. This is typically where a lot of value quarterbacks go off in rookie drafts, where people are either undecided about their talent or maybe their draft capital slips into the second round. For quarterbacks, I'm going to completely let the NFL draft capital dictate if I take Howell here or Ritter here with one of these next two picks. Like for instance, if Howell goes, you know, first round pick number 20 overall or something like Pittsburgh or whatever, then he'll be my smash at 111. If Ritter drops to like the end of the second round, of course, I'm not going to take him up there. But if it flips and oh, fucking Ritter goes to my Falcons at the 108, Howell drops to the second round, then I'll take Ritter here, right? Like again, no one's that good at evaluating quarterbacks. I will let draft capital dictate where I take these guys. There's no point in a dynasty league where a quarterback's value is lower in terms of like trade value than in drafts, startup drafts, rookie drafts. As soon as you draft one of these guys at the 111 and they step foot on the field and NFL field as a starter, you can't get them for any reasonable fucking price. So we're definitely taking, you know, listen, if both of these guys go in the first round, I would think about grabbing both of them at the 111, 112, and then still getting one of those wide receivers at the 2-4. But I have like three or four starting quarterbacks on my team already with that Mills pick, so I don't have to do that. So we'll just say for all intents and purposes, one of these guys goes in the first round, and I'll take, you know, whichever of those guys goes in the first round. So we'll say Sam Howell. Then I get to pick, you know, my next guy. And that's going to be Chris Olave for me. He's my wide receiver four in this class. So he's a, an easy no-brainer here. In a full PPR league, I could see him being a really productive slot receiver at the next level. Next two picks, we have Pickens, Watson. No surprise there. Then Ritter, okay? So I would I would have considered Ritter at the 204 if he fell to me there. There's no one I'm overly excited about at the tight end position. I believe Jalen we uh, Weidemeyer just fucking ran his pro day at above a five, like a 5.040 yard dash. Might 5.1 or 5.03 or some shit. It was bad. Really bad that makes him almost unusable as a fantasy tight end. So that knocks another guy off the tier. Rashad White's available. This is the time where I would start thinking about Rashad White. Now, depending on where these guys go, really good chance Dotson or Sky Moore or both of them end up as first round picks. One of them going to Green Bay or Kansas City. I'll say this 50 fucking times in the video, but the NFL draft will obviously dictate a lot of what happens in the draft. But for overall strategy, I think one of these guys will go first round. So I would probably be taking them above Rashad White. I do need some help with the running back position. So again, if Rashad White gets early day two draft capital, I would probably take him here, depending on the landing spot too. If Rashad White goes, you know, late third round or in like the fourth 
fourth round, I would probably take a first round wide receiver. I don't think that's a fucking hot take to say here. So we'll just say most realistically, I think Rashad White, I don't think he goes second round. I would be hard pressed to see him go early third round. So I think he probably lands end of the third round, early fourth round. And with that, I will take one of these wide receivers again and just pad the depth that I have for remember three starting wide receivers. I need two flexes and this is a full PPR league four wide receivers only. So let's just say Jahan Dotson goes to Green Bay or whatever, or Kansas City. He'll be my pick there. And then I don't pick again until the 3-3. So I have the 3-3 and the 3-4 and then the 3-12 and that's it. So I have three third round picks. And this is where you can hammer hammer running backs because there's a few guys that are still on the board here that I really like that um, I think have a lot of upside at the next level. And we do have Jalen Tolbert here, who I kind of like. Calvin Austin's interesting. But a lot of these guys, again, will depend on draft capital. Bo Melton's the guy that I like as a sleeper. You know, these are guys that I'm not, you know, I'm not going to take them above running backs. Say, like, we're on the board at the 4-7 or some shit, and we're still seeing Bo Melton available. I might send, like, next year's fourth. Or if I have two-thirds, I might send, like, next year's third for this guy's fourth and next year's fourth or something like that. So give him a little bit more draft capital, but get multiple picks. And plus I get my guy who I might think is a third round value. So I'm not jumping up or going crazy over guys all the way down here that might not even get drafted to begin with, but this is running back central where you can get guys like I love Damian Pierce. He's going to be picked there for me easily. And then depending on who you guys like at running back, you know, there's like Noah loves Kevin Harris, but this will depend on draft capital. For instance, like I'm not really high on Brian Robinson, but there's a chance that an NFL team loves him, takes him into the second round, early third round. In that case, he would probably be the pick here for me. Also, depending on where Jalen Tolbert gets picked, I would really like Jalen Tolbert, but he might be a fourth, fifth round pick. I don't know. Pierre Strong. Love him, but he might be a sixth or seventh round pick. And a lot of these guys, again, a lot of these guys will just fall in the randomness of the day three, and we'll see how much we like guys depending on their draft capital here. So for all intents and purposes, again, we will, uh, I'll just, you know, we'll take B-Rob just for the fuck of it. But letting you know, like, that's my that's my strategy here. Once you get into the end of the second, early third, mid third, late third, like fucking tee off on these run on these mid round running backs. I'll take Jalen Flubber here because I like him too much to pass on him for any of these, like, you know, exciting kind of Pierre Strong, Tyler Batty, Ty Chandler, Jared. Actually, all of these guys have gotten, you know, decent enough hype where I think they're okay picks. But I uh, I just got a little ting for Jalen Sober. And I think he's my last draft pick in this spot, unless I'm not seeing something. All right. So the fourth round got a little fucking nutty here based on the computer. But uh, but yeah, this is the result of, of my draft. And <sighs> Sam Howell. Damian Pierce, Brian Robinson, Traylon Burks, Chris Olave, Jahan Dotson, Jalen Tolbert. So I think we just padded the team with a fuckload of really young, high upside depth here. We got a quarterback. We got two running backs. We got four wide receivers, which I love because, listen, two of these guys are going to hit. And you can move them if you want. If you want to move one of them for a running back, you want to trade you know, Chris Olave after a big game plus a next year's second round for like a high upside young running back, you're going to be able to do that. So I think the key point here is understanding the pockets of the draft. What happened here in the first round, I think is going to be super similar to any rookie draft that happens pre-NFL draft. After the NFL draft happens, a lot of shit's going to shake up, of course. And then, you know, all hell's going to break loose. Rankings will change. Tiers will change. Our rankings will be available for purchase before the NFL draft drops, but we have not yet finished our website, which we will eventually tell you guys about. And then you'll be able to get on there and get our insights. So let me know what you guys think of the draft. I think this is exactly how I'll attack the draft. The pocket from like the 109 through the 204 is absolutely smothered with wide receiver and quarterback value. And then after that, I mean, there's a mix of, you know, stringy kind of flaky running backs and wide receivers. So there's also like a tier from like the 209, 208, all the way to like the 35, 36, 37, where there's a kind of, a, you know, a lot of similar players. And some of you guys might love David Bell. I think Sky Moore definitely deserves to be up here a little bit uh, higher. But other than that, I mean, this is where I'm smashing running backs from like the 208 to the 35. And then, you know, just get your guy after that. So we're all going to be fucking wrong and right about a lot of things. And don't let my dumb ass talk you out of guys that you love. And yeah, that's that's today's video. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be doing rookie mock drafts like this every single week leading up to your guys' rookie mock drafts, which usually happen like a week after the NFL draft. Uh, make sure you subscribe. I'm not sure what tomorrow's video is going to be, but we're putting up videos every single fucking day. All right, we're really out here working. So if you appreciate us, subscribe, like the video. Uh, let me know what you think I did well. Let me know what you think I did terribly in this draft. And let me know how your strategy differs from mine. I love you. I'm out.